Yeah, this Saturday it's going to be pretty big. Be ready for it. And if you're not, well, you better be, especially if you're an Oklahoma Sooner fan. Yep, uh, Saturday night, 7 o'clock, ABC, second straight week that the Sooners will be on broadcast TV in prime time. That means the whole country, it's not a regional audience, but a nationwide audience, will again have a chance to see Baker Mayfield, Samaj P. Ryan, um, Eric Stryker, and the rest of the Oklahoma Sooners as the Sooners will do everything that they can to beat TCU and keep their hopes for that college football playoff spot alive. Talk more about that in a second. Um, the game, by the way, as of now, still does not have a point spread, and it may not get one. Of course, uh, biggest reason is because of Trevon Boykin, um, the TCU all-everything quarterback, uh, being questionable for this game. Um, now, you might be asking yourself before I go any further, well, you did broadcast a pregame of TCU and OU earlier in the week. What happened? Well, as far as the content, um, the verbal content, there was nothing wrong with it, but visually, um, I made an error. And when I make an error visually, I try to do my best to fix it and then repost it. But in this case, I couldn't. There, there was just no way um, I could cover up November 28th on the screen. I had inadvertently typed November 28th when I should have typed in November 21st for the TCU OU game. And I could have put an annotation up there, and I could have repeated, hey, the game's not November 28th. Don't look at the bottom of your screen. But that really wouldn't have been proper. And besides, um, I have a chance to update the show anyway and talk a little bit about the updated college football playoff standings. So um, thank you, Navy Thomas, for catching that error. Um, he caught it um, not long after I posted it that day. So as you can tell, we got everything revised now. Um, the college football playoff rankings course came out Tuesday night and on our original show um, since I broadcasted it before this week's rankings were released um, I had the top five being unchanged with Clemson you know Bama Ohio State Notre Dame and Iowa making up the top five and it didn't change um, the changes really occurred when you start at number six Oklahoma State moved up two spots to the sixth spot Oklahoma made the biggest climb of the week uh, going to number seven from number 12 uh, passing uh, the four teams that were highly ranked that lost this past week, including the team that uh, OU beat in Baylor. And they also passed Florida, who's also a one-loss team. But the way I look at it, um, a lot of this is going to play itself out. Okay, People can be upset that Iowa's in the top five. Remember, Iowa, though, is undefeated and OU's not, so that might be uh, something that Sooner fans might want to consider. But the biggest thing to consider when it comes to most of this top ten is that it's going to play itself out, like I said. In other words, SEC, if Florida, um, you know, wins out in the regular season, which would include a win over Florida State, which won't be easy, then it looks like they will get Alabama, assuming Alabama can win out with those teams being highly ranked for the SEC title in the opening week of December. I think that's like a de facto quarterfinal game. In other words, losers done, can't get to the playoff, the winner, I think, gets in. Big Ten, same thing. If Iowa wins out, which means that they'll have to win at Nebraska um, next week, if they went out, uh, meaning that they would have also beaten the Big Ten champion from the Eastern Division, then Iowa would be a perfect 13-0, and they would get in. Otherwise, um, if Ohio State were to win out um, beating Iowa, then Ohio State would represent the Big Ten and get a bid. And I think the ACC right now, uh, you have to say that Clemson, um, no question, has the angle toward getting a spot. So that leaves one spot open. If Oklahoma can win this week and could win at Oklahoma State on the 28th, 11-1 you think would be pretty good. And remember, the Pac-12 doesn't have any undefeated or one-loss teams, so they're pretty much going to stick a fork in them. They're done. So who would be the one team OU would have to worry about? Yeah, the Leprechauns. Yeah, Fighting Irish, those guys from South Bend. Because if Notre Dame would win out and go 11-1, um, then you start comparing resumes for that final spot, and OU would have the edge as far as uh, more quality wins, in my opinion. Um, not much of an edge, but an edge regardless, and would have um, had those wins down the stretch. Um, and sometimes the committee looks at you know who's playing the best at that time as far as the tiebreaker. So you might give the edge to OU there, but on the other hand, Notre Dame is going to say, well, OU's only loss was to a bad Texas team that that you know we beat badly. Um, beating by about, you know, 28 or 30 points. OU couldn't hang with them. Texas beat them. And Notre Dame's only loss came to Clemson, who's currently number one in the BCS. Or not BCS, but in the uh, but in the football playoff rankings. 
So Notre Dame, no question, is going to uh, use that battle cry as well. It's all going to depend just how fair this committee is. If they're fair, I really don't know. If they show any biasness against the Big 12, and a lot of people think that they have been, you know, Joe Klatt, you know, BSPN amongst them, then OU's going to be screwed and going to be left out. And then if OU, you know, like I said, if they, if they go 11-1 and one and get left out, um, I would be interested to see what, you know, what, what Stoops, Castiglione, and for that matter, OU President David Bourne have to say, and if the Big 12 would make any uh, significant changes or maybe talk about going somewhere else. Personally, I think OU should go somewhere else. I think they should go to the Pac-12 or the SEC. I think I think the Big 12 Conference, you know, is, is one that really doesn't have much of a future. I don't think they're going to add any more teams. And to me, it, it's not a conference that shows signs of progress. And I think nationwide, uh, they're taking a back seat to the other four major conferences. But that's just my opinion. As far as Baker Mayfield, Heisman Trophy, I don't know if he'll win it, but right now, all indications are that he's going to at least get an invitation to New York, you know, the week of the uh, ceremony. This takes place, of course, uh, believe it or not, in about three weeks. Um, one disadvantage that Mayfield's going to have beyond his control is that Sooners don't play the opening weekend of December when you have those conference title games, and it looks like Alabama will be playing that weekend, so Derrick Henry, who's the front runner anyway, will have one more chance to show an impression against the committee. The only maybe advantage that would work for OU was the fact that uh, Bama would play probably Florida, and Florida's got a pretty good defense. So I still think right now Henry would have to be your front runner. He had a 200-yard game against Mississippi State. He's had some big games this season. Right now, according to the ESPN experts poll, he's number one, and it's not even close. Mayfield, by the way, is a distant second. But so far, you know, at least, at least Mayfield's showing signs that, hey, you know what? You're, you're a legitimate Heisman contender right now, probably your number two on that list. Um, one thing that will help uh, Mayfield on his resume, another victory. Of course, this Saturday, coming against Texas Christian, whom the last two weeks has not looked at their best. In fact, two weeks ago, losing to Oklahoma State and losing badly. And then last week, almost losing to maybe the worst team in college football, Kansas Jayhawks, who haven't won a game all year. Of course, there's no doubt that the... Trevon Boykin injury, you know, TCU quarterback, you know, the high ankle sprain in that first quarter and he didn't return had an impact on that game. We know this because TCU played two other quarterbacks after that. You know, they had, didn't have a whole lot of success through the air. Um, one thing that did help him in the game, though, was Aaron Green, who's had a terrific year for the for the Horned Frogs in the backfield. You know, he, he went off for way over 150. He was impactful. One of the biggest reasons why, you know, TCU avoided what would have been the biggest upset of the year. Um, you know, Green's a guy that OU will definitely have to watch out for. He will get, um, I think, even more carries. They'll use him as a receiver, in my opinion, because I don't think, personally, that Boykin is going to be all that effective as a runner. I think you're going to see Boykin throw quite a bit. Um, and remember, it's a high ankle sprain as well, so I don't think that he can be 100% considering that this high ankle sprain occurred a week ago. I mean, he's going to have to be one fast healer and be one tough son of a gun in order to be effective. And that's the thing about Boykin. He's not the same quarterback if you take away the running element. Okay, If you make him just strictly pass, the game's going to have a whole different meaning to it. If he's able to be multidimensional, that's going to be a headache for the Sooners. So I do think Green's going to be heavily used. And remember, no Josh Doxson. And this is something that we did not know two days ago. We knew the Doxson would be questionable, according to Patterson. But uh, yesterday on Wednesday, we found out that Doxson is going to miss this game. In fact, he's going to miss the rest of the season, at least the regular season. Of course, Doxson's going to be in the NFL. And remember, two weeks ago, he injured the left arm and also left wrist against Oklahoma State coming down hard on the turf. And last week was ineffective, only one catch. So uh, no Doxson in this game, uh, to say the least, that no question hurts uh, TCU, but they still have talented receivers in Sean Nixon and Colby Lizenby. So I do think, even though Boinkin, um, you know, even if he plays, he may not be the same Boinkin, but they still have other uh, guys on the field that can make an impact. So the Sooner defense um, better be ready. And they better get 44-34 to 34 OU over Baylor out of their head. Great win. Gets you back into the playoff conversation, but that was a week ago. Can't live in the past. You got to focus on the Horn Frogs. And you can't let up just because um, their, their quarterback's health is in question. 
Defensively, I do think the Sooners will have a lot of success in this game. Um, yeah, TCU's had some nice performances, and they needed a nice performance last week um, down the stretch to make sure that Kansas didn't pull off that improbable win. And, and for TCU, from their perspective, um, they had to hold on for dear life, but they did that. Um, and they played well against West Virginia, a very good offense, earlier this season, holding them to 10 points. But for the most part, this has probably been Gary Patterson's worst defense in Fort Worth. I mean, 37 points to SMU. They gave up 40, uh, 52 to, T to a Texas Tech, over half a hundred to the Red Raiders, 45 to K-State. And, of course, two weeks ago in their only loss of the season, uh, they gave up over 40 to uh, Oklahoma State. So I do think that it will be a big game for P. Ryan, and that's what Oklahoma has to do. They have to rely on P. Ryan first in order to make the passing attack work. That's what's been happening lately for the Sooners. Why they've been getting on this five-game winning streak is because the running game has been alive. And that's something we didn't see um, in the month of September. Even in the win against Tennessee, the yards were hard to come by on the ground. But lately, they've, they've been better. Now, the competition may not have been just stellar for most of these last four or five weeks, you know, since the Texas game. But still, offensive line has confidence now, getting some cohesiveness going. And you, the big, big thing is you're able to get those yards in between the tackles and guards for P. Ryan. And he's close to 1,000 yards for the season and, he, of course, coming off that one heck of an October um, and early November, look for the Sooners again to have success against a TCU defense that started the year with only five starters back from the year before. And plus, they've had absences from those starters and other players on that defense since then. So I do think this will be a great opportunity for Mayfield and the receivers, as well as for P. Ryan to score a lot of points. In fact, my final score, I think OU keeps it going. I'm going to go 45 to uh, 27 I'm in favor of the Sooners. Yeah, it's going to be a kind of a cold, windy night, but I think the Sooners are, are, are pretty well focused. I mean, I mean, their offense looked pretty good in spite of the, um, you know, at times monsoon rainstorm in Waco last weekend. I think the Sooners will be able to weather this storm as well. And I, I no doubt think that, that Boykin's going to play, but I don't think he's going to be the same because a high ankle sprain, um, to me, I don't think you, just, you can just recover from it in seven days and be the same quarterback. It would be a shock if that were the case. Not questioning Boykin's toughness, but it is a very difficult injury to overcome. Uh, one more note about the Sooners. Matt Diamond is available to play for the Sooners on Saturday. Might remember he got kicked out of the ball game last Saturday um, against Baylor. Um, you know, he got kicked out, no pun intended, for kicking a Baylor player on an extra point. So not only was he thrown out, but Diamond was basically shouting obscenities to the uh, crowd. To me, that was a shocker that, that he's available for this game. Not necessarily because he got kicked out for, um, for kicking, but uh, for what he did afterwards. But uh, I guess, as they would say in the court, law, court of law, um, Diamond has been sentenced to uh, time served as far as games missed. So he's available to play. Don't know if he'll start, but he's available to play at defensive line on Saturday. Um, but I'm sure he's going to have a lot of um, extracurricular activity to do uh, for the coaching staff, probably a lot of stairs, you know, as in running up and down the stairs and amongst other things. Don't forget my pick show, Me and the Coin, will be coming up on my next video. Didn't do too well last week because of the upsets, but we'll review it regardless and pick some more games. My post game for OUTCU, late Saturday or early Sunday. Boomer Sooner.